Hello. In this video, we're going to go over the receipt printer cutter and what to do if it gets stuck. And we're also going to go over the presenter on the front of the printer and what to do if the receipts aren't coming out of the way or they're coming out skewed. Let's go ahead and open up the top of the machine. And we're going to undo the screws at the front of the uh, sliding tray to hinge the front of the machine forward. There's a single Phillips head screw on either side. Remove these. And then you can hinge the front of the machine forward. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that cutter. This matte colored box in the front of the printer is the cutter. And the symptom that we have is that we cannot push down on this green lever to open up the printer roller because the cutter is stuck in the down position. When this happens, there's two things you can do to try and fix this. The easiest is just to turn power off to the machine. In this case, I'm turning off the red power button. I'm waiting a moment, and then I'm turning the printer back on, or turning the machine back on. And you heard that noise coming from the front of the printer. That was the cutter now returning itself to the home position, and now the lever opens and closes without a problem. But what happens if you try that and it doesn't work? If there's some paper stuck in there, or some other reason why that cutter won't automatically come up? In that case, we're going to need to manually retract the cutter. And the way that we do that is if you look on the top of the printer embossed into this cover on top, there's an arrow that points towards this corner. And if you look here, this is the motor that drives the cutter up and down. So if we come into this little hole here that the arrow is pointing to, if we come into it at an angle along with that motor with a thin tipped Phillips screwdriver, there is a plastic screw inside here that we can turn and that will manually retract the cutter. That will lift the, the cutter up. I'm going to show you a demonstration on a printer that's outside of the machine to make it a little easier. Here you're looking at a printer that's had this top cover removed just simply so it's easier to see. And down in here, this white screw, this is the screw that we're going to turn to manually retract the cutter with the screwdriver. And what we can look for here on the side of the printer is you can see right between this green plastic gap and this metal piece, you can see part of the cutter is sticking down. And that's if you try and open this, you can see that kind of flexing in that spot. This little part here is the cutter, this line that's going up and down. And that's why this won't open. So how do we manually retract it? We take our small screwdriver, we stick it into this corner, and in this case, we're going to turn it counterclockwise. And normally there's a motor turning this, so it turns fairly quickly. So we might have to turn it quite a few times before it works. But you give it a handful of turns, and then you can look down here and see if it's still blocking. And I can see there's still a little bit of a tab right in there where it's blocking it. So we're going to keep turning again, counterclockwise. And now the printer will open up easily. The cutter's been moved out of the way. The cutter is on an ellipse, which means that you could turn this screw infinitely, and as you turn it, it'll just the cutter will slowly go down and then back up and then down and then back up. So just turn it enough in this in the counterclockwise direction until it lifts back up. If it continues to be stuck, keep turning and turning and looking through this little hole right here and make sure that the cutter's out of the way. Once you get it out of the way, then it's going to go ahead and open up. Okay, and back to the live machine. Um, so the cutter was stuck. We couldn't open the green lever. We try rebooting the power first. If that doesn't work, then we use our screwdriver in through this little hole here on the corner to manually retract the cutter, and now we're able to open and close it. Once that's done, you can go ahead and print a test receipt by holding down the small black button on the side of the circuit board that points up over here, and make sure that it's cutting properly. If the cutter is not cutting all the way through the paper, it usually means that there's something bent. If the cutter is leaving a small nib in the middle that you're having to pull on it or whatever, it means something in this roller assembly down here is bent or something within the cutter is bent. And there is not a lot you can do without fully disassembling the printer to do that. It's not really field serviceable at that point. So if you run into a problem like that, talk to support or the printer may need to be serviced. But that's how you fix a stuck cutter. The next section of the printer we want to talk about is the presenter, which is this section here in front, which pushes the receipt 
out to the customer and through the bezel. This black plastic frame and then these clear covers. Let's talk about how it works. The paper comes out the cutter and goes into through this channel. It pushes down on this small little switch here. There's a little toggle there. And when you push on that, it turns on the motor and that pushes the receipt out the front. And there's this metal piece here. Uh, this is a uh, stop to prevent someone from sticking their credit card in to the receipt slot. But this whole assembly kind of floats up and down. This metal shaft with these two hard plastic rollers uh, sit, sits up on top. There's some spring clips that hold it in place. And what's critical here is that this piece needs to sit on top of the rubber rollers that are down below. Let me show you a, a sample of the rubber rollers. If we were to turn the printer over and look at the bottom of it, these are the two rubber wheels that drive are driven by this motor here. And these wheels turn and they spit out the receipt. And these wheels also need to be touching these hard plastic wheels up on top. If they're not, if you can turn the wheels down below and the wheels up on top aren't turning, then, then we have some type of a problem. Another thing is to check and make sure that these wheels are clean. Use an alcohol swab or something that's not going to fall apart when you, uh, if you try scrubbing on some soft rubber. I guess a, a cloth would be better. Uh, or some rub, something with some rubbing alcohol. And if, there, if you see any buildup on these uh, wheels, clean them off. And uh, you can also check this sensor here and make sure that this is in position in case it started to fall down and it's, the paper's not able to push on it. This is just held in place with a clip. So if you just give it a little push with your finger and make sure it's in there all the way. From this angle, you can also see that the, that the shaft goes up and down in this little uh, notch. And so make sure that the ends uh, are poking through the little plastic uh, notches there. Uh, another thing to check in the front of the printer here is this gap where the clear plastic is meeting the black plastic. Make sure that there's actually a gap and that it's even all the way across. Sometimes even on a brand new machine, something in shipping can get pinched and push this plastic part down into that and it will create a restriction so that the, as the receipt's trying to leave, it can't. So look across the front of this and make sure that that's even. Finally, as we talked about in our receipt paper loading and uh, alignment video, make sure that the front of this printer is aligned properly with the back of the bezel. If you have this pushed down or lifted up a little too much, the paper as it leaves the print rollers won't enter this presenter correctly and it will create a restriction. So make sure that this is aligned properly, close the bezel up and then look behind it and make sure that this section is aligned flat with the outlet of the bezel. I hope these printer tips have been helpful. If you have any other questions about this, please contact Jmega Support. We'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.